So, after watching some of my favorite content creators play VR games, I got hooked, like many people, to the idea of VR gaming. This is not the first time I've had the inclination, but it's the first time I felt like it was real and attainable. I actually built my computer in hopes of one day using VR and playing VR games. I made sure the entire way that it would be a compatible, formidable machine that wouldn't break my wallet, but would still play stuff anywhere from 60 to 100 FPS, so that when that glorious day came, I could set up a room to play in and have a wild time. Recently, I bought an Oculus Rift S. This thing seemed like the primo option to me for the money. Five cameras to see both the room and track the controllers, gyroscope and the headset in each controller, 1280 by 1440 resolution per eye at 80 hertz, built-in microphone, and headphones. No review videos I've personally seen have made much of an attempt to show you what it's actually like to put the headset on. It's gonna look terrible because it's on a phone camera, but I don't care because the rough approximation of what it looks like is what you really have to know. First off, the lenses have this massive curved them that makes it so they're never quite in focus no matter how you sit the headset on your face. You can't see it here, so I'll go ahead and apply blur to the capture footage. It looks like you have blur either to the top or the bottom quite heavily depending on how centered it is. It's gonna move around as you play because there's no way to get the headset perfectly flush with your face so that it doesn't budge. It's also around the edge of the entire eye, and stuff that's in the center is basically crystal clear. This means your instinct will become moving your head to look around over moving your eyes, and it never feels quite natural to play this way. You'll never get this to go away, and you will constantly be trying to clench or refocus your eyes, and it just never happens. Everything looks slightly off and it's straining. I personally am nearsighted. I wear glasses for things that are far away. I assumed, because I didn't know anything, that I might be able to see without them while wearing a VR headset. I can't. The lenses make things look like they're at least room length away from you. It also makes putting the headset on and taking it off quite uncomfortable as my glasses grind into my rather large head while I slide the headset down. It's not egregious. I just have to be a little careful. No, there is no amount of strap adjusting that will fix this, the headset is at its absolute most open and wide setting when I am putting it on. Every single time a game is booting, it will flash a bright white light in your face several times. There is also the interpupillary distance, which I have messed with a lot, and as of this video, there is no way I know of to check this in VR. You have to get a tape measure, walk up to a mirror, and measure it yourself manually. Mine is 7.4 millimeters, which is 0.2 millimeters longer than the widest setting on this headset. Set. It's a software setting and not a physical one. I am not sure how that matters. Again, I am a huge motherfucker, but it doesn't seem to matter because no amount of messing with this changed how VR felt for me. I have heard of the fabled screen door effect. I don't have any issues with what I think it is at all. I can't see it if it's here. What I do have is aliasing issues on almost everything. The picture is so clear, even with the large amounts of blur, and it's so close to your face that the resolution of these screens isn't high enough to curb the aliasing. No matter how high the setting is in a game, you will see it. It's especially bad in menus. If you have a beefy enough rig, Steam VR has a setting for upping the virtual resolution per eye. This will run your computer into the ground and causes issues if your computer can't handle it, and it will solve anti-aliasing only in Steam VR games. You can also use it to downscale the image if you want, if you're absolutely desperate to play VR on a potato. Even though the cable now works, I still don't plug in the mic or the headphones, if you want to call them that, just in case the amount of shit running on one USB 3 causes issues. I have my own studio quality mic and headphones anyway. My headphones fit right over it. A little clumsily, but they do. As far as the software proprietary to the headset, I really like the camera pass through that makes it so you can see your own physical space when you're in VR. If you ever need to reorient, you can hit one button if you lose track of yourself in real life without having to take the headset off. It's amazing. Amazing. I also really like the virtual desktop options where I can put either of my displays or a window anywhere in the space around me. It has a customizable home that's basically pointless. This is all proprietary to Oculus itself and may or may not be in the Steam VR program, even though it still has to run in the background for most games that you will be mix and match playing on Steam or the Oculus Store, as nowhere has a huge selection on its own. The controllers are pretty good. The battery covers slip 
off sometimes, but it's not a huge issue. Controller straps are proprietary, which means the thin strip of leather you get is basically pointless and you're gonna have to jerry-rig your own solution eventually. Tracking sometimes loses the controllers, most often the left one, and I can't tell exactly why, but I think it has something to do with the lighting levels of my office or the idle settings for battery saving. I only have one overhead light and a ceiling fan, and I have no idea if the blades of the fans casting shadows on the walls would also cause issues for the tracking or not. For the most part, playing seated is fine, but the better experience is certainly had while standing, especially as I am 6'4", and the calibration for most games does not understand a person who is sitting who is that tall. Doesn't really understand it for standing either, but the standing is better. This is just my experience. If you are average height, it will probably not affect you at all. Something else you have to consider is that most games assume you're going to get sick, and so by default they have a jerky turn option for looking around. You usually can't even change to a smoother camera. Some games even map this turn to a button, which on the Oculus is terrible feeling, as it has two sticks, like a normal controller. Payday 2, for example, has you turning with a button on either controller, and the stick is used as a D-pad for four different mapped functions unrelated to looking or movement. I don't know why. The earlier in VR's life cycle the game was made, the more restrictive the options are going to be for comfort while playing, and there's never rebindable functions for the controllers. I don't know why. They're not in any game have I seen this. To me, this added comfort step and this lack of customizability always takes me out of the experience because again, I don't get motion sick whatsoever and I don't know what added comfort this could add for people who do because I just don't have that problem. It's a little bit of the Wild West again as far as controller options and functions are considered because we're back to something like the PS2 era where we don't fully understand the tech we're working with or how people are going to use it or settle into it. The main reason I actually wanted an Oculus was because it was the cheapest option that had two sticks on the controllers. You know, the way we've been playing video games since the PlayStation 1. I would also really like to see games have mixed VR functions where you can use VR controllers without a headset, or vice versa. Games that would really benefit from a mixed experience like this would be something like Ace Combat 7, which has a VR experience on the PS4, but not the PC. I would love to put my headset on and be able to look around in VR while using a flight stick on my desk, but this isn't possible. It's not something you can actually do. These kind of options seem extremely obvious down the road things that may someday come to us. But as it currently stands several years into VR's life cycle, the technology is apparently still too new and too underutilized to have anything but what feels like gameplay demonstrations. This was my huge fear buying a VR headset in the first place. You're not gonna get a game that's done, per se. Everything still needs huge tweaks, huge amounts of playtesting and modification before developers even attempt to make a full-scale game experience in a niche market like VR. The main games that get close are things like Until You Fall, Payday 2, Boneworks, Half-Life Alex, Pavlov, and super hot. But that really isn't a huge lineup, and all but one of these is a first person shooter. You have to really like shooters and VR at this point, but that really isn't a huge lineup. Most consoles have launch years that look as sparse as that. And VR is several years in, like almost a decade, if not a decade by now. Unless you have a particular game you're interested in and a huge beefy rig and don't care how much it costs to get a headset on your face, it might not be very worthwhile buy for you. And even then, why buy an Oculus if that extremely specific set of criteria are met? All in all, I have to say, even though it's like buying a game console again for the very first time, it's still very fledgling technology. That if you're on the cheaper side of things and considering a Rift S like I was, you can probably wait it out a generation or so and get much more robust experiences and a much more robust and immediately functional headset going forward because the technology is being utilized in ways that are correct, don't get me wrong, just nobody's doing it all at once. Which means that it is here to stay this time, as opposed to way back when we had, you know, this thing. Which means that we're so close, as opposed to the other many shots we've taken in gaming history. Now here's part two of this video. This is my journey of how I got my headset to work and what I meant earlier by shoving too many devices down a USB 3 and why I felt the need to stress this was not immediately functional near the end of the review. 
Enjoy. It came in the mail from Microsoft's store online. Why there? I had a discount. Why is this box not taped shut? Why is this cut? I asked myself upon opening the box inside the Microsoft store box. Probably nothing, I thought. Started installing all the prerequisite software, signed away my soul to Facebook. For some people, this was the line on why they would not purchase an Oculus. Then, nothing. The headset just wouldn't register as plugged in. Probably something small and simple, I told myself, so I Googled it. 10 hours. Later, I was 10 to 15 solutions in, doing all of them at the same time. These solutions varied from setting all USB drivers to generic Windows ones, setting their power management to never turn this device off, to unplugging any HDMI monitors, because apparently the Rift S just causes itself to fuck up if you have anything HDMI plugged into the same graphics card. I can't fathom how this product was officially released like this. Regardless, I emailed support. Please help me. I have tried everything. This went back and forth until support it was certain that I had tried everything. I sent them my logs, which had way more information about my computer in it than I was comfortable sending them. I did it anyway. I also sent pictures of cable, which looks like this. It's obviously damaged in a way that implies someone had plugged this thing in a million times angrily. They said my drivers were out of date. Preposterous. I just updated them. I triple checked them three times before emailing them. Maybe it's not installing correctly or there's a problem with Windows. As some people on forums said a reinstall worked for them, so... I resorted to the nuclear. I updated my BIOS. I reinstalled Windows, updated all of my drivers, every single one from the USB controllers to finally changing my drives from IDE to AHCI. Now, Oculus Rift was the only thing set up to run on my computer. It still didn't fucking work. I saw someone say online that AS Media USB 3.0 drivers for some reason didn't work with the Rift S, so I bought the PCIe USB 3.0 hub that Oculus recommended to its users when the original CV one came out and people were having issues with that cable. In the meantime, I basically resolved to send it the fuck back. I asked Microsoft for a return. They send me a shipping label in PDF format. Standard practice. You'd think this would be where my story ends, but no. I'm an idiot. Later that afternoon, I try it on my roommate's PC in the living room. It turns on. The headset goes through some of the tutorial. It's working. It's working! And then it shuts off. And I won't turn back on until both it and the software are completely reset and replugged in. We're back to square one. It's then that I realize the obvious, obvious design flaw of trying to fit five cameras, a gyroscope, controller sensors, Bluetooth, a microphone, and stereo audio into a single USB 3.0. Point oh. Two days later, still trying everything, the PCIe hub finally arrives from Amazon. I install its drivers from the internet, that way patiently, I get as far as I did on my roommate's computer. The headset registers for the first time on my PC. The sensor check completes. I put the headset on, it displays my office in a static filled mess. This is the first real sign that my hunch about it being the cable was right. It cuts off. I plug it back in try again. Again, it's a static filled mess, but I charge through it. Finish the tutorial. Cuts off. It won't turn back on. I am absolutely certain at this point that it's a faulty cable. Absolutely sure of it. Meanwhile, in the background, I've still been back and forth with Oculus support. Then, after I have resolved to send it to them, I ask for a replacement cable, and they send me another email. What would it be this time? The answer to my prayers? No. It's worse than a list of troubleshooting tips, or a play or, I'm sorry, we can't help you. It's an excuse. Now, you see, Oculus recommends an FX4350 or better if you don't know your AMD processors. It's a four core that's decent. At the time of this email, I was running an FX8350, the unlocked eight core larger cache big brother to the 4350. Both of these came out in 2012 and they're old, but they're still more than serviceable. It's almost the best thing that will go in an AM3 Plus slot on a motherboard. It's the same series of processor and runs the same chipset drivers. To this day, it's a 550, whoa, holy shit. It's an expensive processor on Newegg. All that to say, it's the or better part of the recommendation. Oculus wanted me to downgrade to the worst processor, which I had in this motherboard at one point because my FX8350 is somehow not supported. I built this computer myself. This is nothing but an insult to my intelligence and a way to place blame on me, the consumer. No. Hell no. You cannot be fucking serious. 
It is now that I have to tell you I spent so long without making this review video that it's at this point I should also mention that I have since upgraded to a Ryzen 9 3950X and a new MSI X570A Pro motherboard with a VR-ready USB 3.0 slot right on the back and I've had exactly the same issues. This thing is going back, I said, and promptly missed the Microsoft Store return deadline due to issues regarding where I live versus where the nearest UPS drop-off is. I live in the middle of a wheat wasteland, so this was kind of a Herculean task for me, who doesn't own a car, and my roommate does, and it's complicated. After about another week, I get another email from Oculus asking if I sent my headset back. In shame, with my head down, I say, no, no I haven't. They finally offer to RMA it. I print the label and try to figure out how to send it. I figure out I can give it to a friend while he's visiting for D&D night to drop off at the UPS store because the only one we have is an hour's drive away where he lives. About another three days later, I get a new headset in the mail. I plug everything in. Same issues of not detecting the cameras. Great, I thought, still doesn't fucking work. And then I go through all of the normal troubleshooting steps that I had already learned back when I thought, ah, must be a simple problem. And you know what? Hey, it worked. After this point, I had an absolute blast playing Until You Fall. And I played it in five hour sessions for three days straight. I don't get motion sick, as I said before, and I haven't been outside much since the whole, you know, so this was very much needed exercise for me. I went all out until I couldn't even lift my arms anymore. That's when I took to writing this review. So if you haven't got it by now, buyer beware. Consider that the Oculus Rift S is at least $300 cheaper than all of the competition for a reason. There is the risk that support is going to be continually incompetent and find every excuse not to honor the warranty. Officially, support has actually been dropped for the Rift S, but due to supply shortages, they started selling refurbished Rift S headsets they had in stock as brand new, which was very likely the case with mine, as the box was open and the cable was marred. Keep in mind that Oculus didn't actually make the Rift S, it was contracted out. So a firmware update can, and has in the past, wipe out your device at any given moment, and they're under no legal obligation to keep supporting it. This headset came with almost a full month of troubleshooting, back and forth emails, sending a package of which they didn't even get my correct name on the shipping label for. In return, I got a product I'm not ecstatic about for almost every reason I can think of, except the potential of what VR could be someday, once it's improved more. It's a damn shame this is what I got. 